Welcome back to the sheep fields of Perthshire. So I've been a little bit under the weather. I've had a virus which has kind of floored me for a week. Part and parcel of getting older, unfortunately. It takes a wee bit longer to get over these things, but taking a wee bit of a rest. You might hear I'm next to a, a lovely little spring which is coming off the hillside. And I've got three fields over in this direction, which I'm going to give a go. I have done them before, although not particularly heavily. Um, two of them are ploughed and the third one is still in barley stubble. Uh, I've got the option of a fourth one as well, which is um, the actual fields are owned by three different farmers, but they've all given me their permission. So I can jump from one field to the next and anything is possible because I've had hammered, we've had lead tokens, musket balls, um, a few milled silvers, a silver thimble. So anything is possible. Um, as ever, if you're not already subscribed, then please hit the button. And you will also notice there is no distant cackle of the Spanish detectorist. But he is coming out with me tomorrow. So hopefully you'll be getting a video of me and the big Spaniard coming soon. Uh, let's go and see if we can find some treasures. As ever, I'm on the XP Deus 2. I'm going with Jethro's custom programme. A few people have been asking about uh, what is the blue bit at the end of my coil. Well, uh, look at SND Detectorist had made me up this little thing. So I've put that on. So that's all it is. It's just a little name tag. Um, also, I've updated my, uh, my connector. Um, I've put on this one that allows it to tilt. So I'm giving that a bit of a bash. The only problem was I couldn't quite get the screws sorted out. So all I've done is I've just looked through a piece of wire. Someone suggested in the comments that that's what they do. And it seems to be doing quite well so far. So we'll see how we get on. Well, let's go and see what we can find. Two minutes in, we've got our first signal. To be honest, it doesn't sound great. 58 to 62. Um, but it could be a gold coin. Well, now it's jumped to 75 and it's a much better target. Might just be a bit of copper. One more and then we'll get the pinpointer out. We're out. And now it's reading 73 to 79. I think it's going to be junk. But as you know, I always film the first target. What's that? Plastic. There it is there. And it is indeed a piece of copper. Purpose and date. Completely unknown. A bit of junk. It's been hard going for the first hour. All I have managed to do so far is clean up the farmer's field of junk and trash. But finally, we've got to find that it isn't complete and utter junk. It's a little leather fitting, a copper alloy fitting, a stud or a rivet, maybe a hundred, a couple of hundred, maybe even 300 years old. There's no leather attached, so it's been in the ground for a while because often they've still got leather on them. But that's my first good find. Oh well. This one was pretty faint. It was an 84 in the ground. 81, 83 now. Still doesn't sound amazing, but just in case. Have we got a clod? We have got a clod. What's that there? Oh, oh, it's not a coin. Thought it was round and coinish, but it might be a button. Or it might just be a bottle top. Oh, what do we reckon? It's hard to say really. Could be one or the other. It could be part of a two piece. Or it might just be part of a bottle top. Um, I think it's probably part of a button. Looks a bit too thick to be a bottle top. Oop, and also it's quite shallow, so I, I can't see that fitting over the end of a bottle and staying on. So I think it's part of a two-piece button. Maybe 18 or early 1900s. This one was an 84, and it seemed like a really big target. Far too big to be a coin. It actually turns out it's smaller than a coin. 
So I don't know what I did there. But I think it's another part of a either a hat pin or a hairpin. We'd have had a great big long spike on there. Could have been ending up to maybe even six or eight inches long. And this would help to attach your hat to your bun or your hair. Stop it blown away. So probably lost by a female field worker. Maybe in the summer, sheltering in the shade from the scorching Scottish sunshine. Well, maybe not. But uh, Victorian, I would guess, 1830s, 1900. But it's a find. An ear blower. 1991. Always nice numbers to get. It's either a bottle top, a Georgian coin, or silver. Or something else. Oh. Out and still sounding pretty nice. Oh, it's round. Kind of. It's a button. Oh, it's a... Hmm. Oh. Well, it might be a little... A little ring brooch, maybe. It's, it's definitely... I don't think it's a washer because it's... Kind of got a raised edge on both sides. It's not perfectly flat. Okay, I will uh, clean this up off camera and get back to you. I am not sure about this one, to be quite honest. Um, I can't see normally if it was a ring brooch, there would be a little nick on one side where the pin would sit. But I can't see that. Um, but I don't know. Don't know if it's old or not. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, I don't know, could be old, maybe not, but let me know. I did the first field for about an hour and 45 minutes. Didn't get much, decided to jump into field number two, which is where I've been for the last 50 minutes. And I haven't had a single target, diggable target, until now. And here it is. 91, 90, oh no, I think I can actually see it. Is it a piece of copper? Oh no, it might be a coin. Ha ha, ha ha, right there on the edge. It's a coin, it's Georgian. Yes, it's Georgian with a bit of an imprint, but unfortunately it's not looking like it's got much detail. That's a pretty crusty looking coin, but at least we've got a coin. So that's been what, an hour and three quarters and a about three quarters of an hour here, so I don't know, two and a half to three hours anyway of detecting approximately. But we'll see if we can get some detail off this, but it definitely looks Georgian to me. Now this is the reverse. You can kind of see Britannia seated, uh, even through the crust just starting to come through. And as suspected, it is indeed a half penny. And it is Mr. Potato Head, King George III. So, oh, I dropped it. It's probably undone all my work to clean it in the first instance. But you should be able to just make out his head looking to the right-hand side. And at the top right-hand corner, I can see 111. So it is indeed George III, sometime between 1760 and 1820. I was actually watching the Madness of King George movie the other night. What a terrible relationship he had with his son, <laughs> the future George IV, but uh, that's another story entirely. Anyway, it's coin number one. We got there in the end. I've found my first relic in this field, and it is this little fella. It's a lead soldier, almost intact, just headless. And there you are, quite a bit of the paint still on there as well. Now that looks like a red coat. And the red coat was the preferred uniform of the British Army. Until, until I think it was the African campaigns, the Zulu and the Boer Wars, that's when they realised that we're in red in a, in a brown and green landscape wasn't such a good idea. So they began to wear khaki. And one of the first people to encourage that was 
was a man from Scotland called Lord Lovett. And Lord Lovett formed the Lovett Scouts. And they were kind of like the Special Forces. Britain's first sort of Special Forces unit. And they fought in the Boer War. And they completely changed the way that the British fought. They, they, uh, they were crack shots. Many of them were recruited from the Scottish Highlands. And they knew how to live off the land and live in extremes of weather and conditions. And the Lovett Scouts were born. And uh, that is almost certainly a red coat soldier. So why did they wear red coats? Well, there's different stories, different theories, but the biggest one is actually it was cheap. The colour red could easily be um, sought and um, purchased for not a lot of money. So red was the colour of choice. There's other stories that they wore red because when they were shot, blood didn't seep through. The fact your stomach was hanging out had nothing to do with it. But probably from early 19 to maybe middle of the 1900s. Maybe a child's favourite toy. Brilliant. Well, it's round and it feels like lead and it's got a little bar across the middle. So it's something. It wasn't a convincing signal, to be quite honest. But it's a thing. Not sure what. Maybe some sort of elaborate hem weight, but... If you know, comment below. Maybe a couple of hundred years old at best. It was a real deep one, about 11, 12 inches down. Great big lump of lead, but good detection depth. Just a few feet from the edge of the field, I've had a few tin cans, bit there, another bit next to it, another bit further down. This one, 78, and I think we've got another coin. Didn't sound like it. Didn't sound that good a target, but it looks like a half penny. Quite sandy soil as you can see. And it looks like a head looking to the right, maybe? Is it dirty Bertie? It could be. Okay, we'll get with the bendy thumb treatment and get right back to you. Well, I'm not quite sure how I managed to see a head looking to the right because clearly it's a head looking to the left, and it's also not Dirty Bertie. It's a woman. It's Queen Victoria, Alexandrina. It's a halfpenny. She's got her old, um, what was it called, coronation head, or her old head, I think actually is just what it was called. And it is a halfpenny. It's in pretty good condition. Big sort of dirty corrosive bit right in the middle, but that'll clean up. And a very clear date at the bottom of 1898, so just three years before her death in 1901. Lovely. Coin number two. Remembering to press record might have actually uh, helped. Got some dark soil right there, but I think it's going to be junk. No, maybe not. Well, there you go. I can see something there. And it's a coin. There's a bit of an imprint. I think it's going to be a spendable. Let's tease it out with the mud in it. It's got that brown colour to it, of modernish coins. It could be a halfpenny, I suppose, a ship's halfpenny. It's definitely a coin, though. And it is a ship's halfpenny, I think. Oh. As I say, I've got Big Simon coming out tomorrow, so the two of us will go out on that field that's produced the Roman coinage. And... Uh, other great finds alongside and we've got lots of other options nearby so what have we got it's a ship's half penny so there's the golden hide uh, sorry the golden hind h-i-n-d um and we've got a date of 1943 so during the second world war and there he is looking to the left hand side it's edward edward the sixth six I think he was Edward VI, um, Queen Elizabeth II's late father. But it is another coin. And just a year before the D-Day landings, during the Second World War. My day is complete. Coca-Cola, 1992. And immediately after the ring pool, comes a piece of cutlery. Fantastic. We've got another two for one, both out the same hole. 
that one's a 72, 73. And that one's an 83, 84. Let's go with this one first. There is more aluminium. Okay, stick that in the bag. This one here, sounded better. Is, oh, I thought we had silver. Well, we've got gold and silver. It's a bottle top, I think. Oh well. Didn't sound like a coin, but there's something big and round right there. Mm, doesn't feel heavy enough. What is that? Feels more like it's made of aluminium. Pass. Might be a button. Might be a bottle top. So what is this mystery object? It's either lead or pewter. It's like a stem for a glass or a vase. But I don't know. Clearly broken at the top and at the bottom. But let me know in the comments below. Another ear blower. 95. Now I've moved away from round that gateway. Yes, I've got a few coins, but the sheer, sheer amount of aluminium just wasn't worth it. You can see the soil. It's a lot sandier here. I suspect though this might be more junk. Well, it's an ear tag, which is better than, than nothing. Well, it's not really, but I'm trying to convince myself. So, there you go, 73691, poor coup. Well, we've got our first button, intact one at least, and there might be some decoration on it. Still got the loop on the back. Seems to be in reasonable condition. The soil here is very sandy, so I'm hoping if there's detail on this, it's going to look okay. Oh, and it is. Well, there's definitely something on there. Oh yes. Well, I'm hoping I get a Georgian coin out of this field because if this button's in to go by, it's going to look pretty good. Okay, I can't quite read it yet, but I'm going to give it a wee rub-a-dub and get back to you. It's a nice one. So it says along the bottom, it says Royal Engineers. In the centre, the cipher looks like a G and an R. Maybe George, one of the Georges, George V, George VI, maybe even slightly earlier, with probably some sort of Latin inscription around the outside edge. And then at the very top, a crown. So it is a button of the Royal Engineers. May well have been gold in colour when it was originally lost, but probably first or Second World War, but if it's older, then let me know. Brilliant, nice find. You know my motto, if in doubt, take a spade fill out. Sounds a lot better than it did a second ago. Oh, maybe another button. Mm, I think it must be, unless it's a spendable. Or it could be a half penny. It might be a half penny, but I think it's toasted. But I'll get back to you. As suspected, it is indeed a little half penny. I haven't had one for a while. Um, it's post decimal. I can't remember when they faded these out. I think it was maybe 1982, but it could have been slightly earlier than that. But it's uh, Elizabeth II, the late Queen Elizabeth, looking to the right hand side. So even though we went decimal, 100 pence to the pound, uh, I want to say 1974, 1972, but I'm probably completely wrong. Um, even though we went decimal, 100 pence to the pound instead of 240 pence to the pound, we decided to keep the half penny, because otherwise it would uh, cause a little more inflation. So they stuck around for a while, but you couldn't buy much with them, that's for sure. The faintest of targets, it wasn't particularly deep. Question is, have we got a coin again? Or is it a button? And I think it's a coin. I'm on fire. 
That's possibly coin number five today. Which is pretty good going considering I haven't been out that long. Doesn't look in great condition though. But it looks like another farthing quarter of a penny, having had a half penny. Back to you in a sec. I thought I had no chance, but amazingly I've been able to get a date off it, which tells me exactly who it is. So it's either 1860 or it's 1869. And I think it's 69. So it is Queen Victoria again. Quarter of a penny. And she's under there somewhere. But still, it's another coin. This is getting seriously worrying. From a depth of about 10 inches, it's another box iron. What is going on? I haven't had a box iron in years and I've had like five in six digs. This is just ridiculous. Well, an old Victorian box iron and someone is definitely trying to give me some suggestion. It's a cracker. 87. But you know what I've just spotted? We might have a tiny little bottle. A wee glass bottle, surely that is not going to be whole. You know what, it is. It is. It is a whole bottle. I cannot believe it. How has that survived hundreds of years in this field? What have we got on the bottom? We've got... Zoom you in. A U, a C and a B. No, a J. Or is it a U? No, it's a J. J, G, B. And... Maybe an eye at the end as well. Look at that. How on earth has that survived? A hundred plus years in a field. Incredible. Right, stick that away in the pocket. Probably a little medicine bottle or a meat paste. And hopefully here, hope, put my zoom back to normal. Hopefully here, we could have a coin. It's a very crisp target, that's for sure. And we're out, but not quite as crisp. Lead. No, nope, worse. It's a moo tube thing. No, it's not. It's solder. Ah, oh, junk. From welding. No shortage of signals in this field compared with the first, and without doubt compared with the second. We're only done. I think I only dug one target, and it was a Georgian coin. Wish I'd found that Georgian coin in this field. Because this sandy soil is hopefully going to help. This has got potential to be Georgian. Well, there's something big and round. Doesn't feel heavy enough to be a coin. Is it a button? Or a washer or something? I think it's got a hole in the middle. It does. Well, I would say hem weight, but it's... But it's not lead. There's no weight to it. It's a thing. It's been silvered. So I don't know, maybe just leather decoration. But if you know, comment below. We've got some, what is it Simon calls it? Posh junk, or good junk. Uh, Try Baxter's famous strawberries. And it's something syrup. So it's uh, the Baxters, if it's the same family, are still in existence today. They're famous for making jam and for making soup and various other things as well. Oh, and date-wise, I'm guessing this is probably, I don't know, 1950s, 60s, something like that. And Perthshire is famous for strawberry and raspberry production. It's often called the berry capital of Great Britain because lots of fertile slopes that face south, so they get the maximum amount of sunlight. That's a funny shaped bit of pottery, is it not? Ugh, I hate to think. Is it part of like a toilet or a, ugh, a bedpan? Ugh, ugh, we'll put that back. I thought I might have had something good there, but I think it's actually, I think that's actually a vaccine bottle. It's a little glass vial. And you would use a syringe, that little rubber on top, 
it was like a one-way rubber, so you would pierce it with a needle. So I'm assuming it's probably an animal vaccine, or medicine, or antibiotic. So, let me know. Getting towards the end of time, I've got about three or four hundred yards of field to go. 92. Some of the best finds have come at the end of the day recently. But I've been plagued with aluminium. I haven't been doing any live digs because aluminium's coming, coming through at all different readouts, old and new. This one though sounded slightly more promising. And because I'm almost at the end of the day, I'm always hopeful that maybe, just maybe, there might be something good. And I think I've got more aluminium because I just caught a glimpse of something. There. Well, it's either a silver ingot or it's a bit of aluminium or stainless steel. Junk. Darn. This is going to be my last dig of the day. Eighty. Is it going to be something amazing or is it going to be more junk? Well, it's down there. A little bit of depth to it. And we're out. But it doesn't sound very good. There is something green. And we have, for the last dig of the day, a thing. No idea what that is. It's kind of like a stopper almost. Well, looks like it's got writing on it. It does, but not that I'm going to be able to make out. It's a hefty wee thing. It's like, it's very heavy. Like bronze. But, yeah, it's a thing. If you know, comment below. I think, oh, I've dropped it. That'll be me for today. And there we go then, folks. Another day. And let's have a wee look at the best of the finds. And there we are, folks. That is the best of the best. One, two, three, four, five coins. Um, two half pennies. In fact, three half pennies. A farthing, which is a quarter of a penny. And a half penny. Well, in fact, four half pennies, should I say. Um, albeit one of them's post decimal. Uh, a very nice little button of the Royal Engineers, which I'm hoping I'll find out a little more detail about. Uh, I now think this is probably a milk bottle top, but maybe it's part of a two-piece button. A little hat, a pin, this bizarre little pewtery lead something, vessel, stem, wine glass, candlestick holder, um, maybe. Uh, I think this is a hem weight. Different style, but should have had that type before. Bit of a spoon, bit of a buckle, possible little ring uh, thing, ring ring brooch, penannula I think they call them, and then my, probably my find of the day I think. I really like this wee lead soldier, his wee red coat, except he's lost his head, literally. Um, well, it's a toss up between that and the button. The button is exceptionally good I have to say, so very good uh, state of preservation on that Royal Engineer button. But, um, I've decided to, to stop early. As I say, I've not been feeling great recently and don't want to overdo it because I've got a fairly full day tomorrow with Simon. So five coins, a few relics, a few items. Nothing exceptionally old. Uh, George III, I think, was the oldest thing from 1760 to 1820. Um, most of the half pennies we find tend to be around sort of 1796 through to about 1810. So it's probably from that kind of period. So. Just over the 200 year old mark. I can't complain about that. So that is me for another day. Um, back out tomorrow. Hopefully a good night's sleep tonight. Charge me up, ready for tomorrow. And uh, I'll be back out 
with Big Simon, the Spanish detectorist. So thank you all for watching. If you like what you see and you're not already subscribed, then you know what to do. Hit the button. And we'll see you all on the next dig, assuming we find anything. So take care and thanks for watching. Now for those of you who've stuck around till the very end, oh you get some bonus footage. Look who is here. Hello Jura. Just completely ignore me. Thank you Jura. That was really nice of you. She's off. Say hello. Come here and say hello. The people want to see you. Come here. Let me see. Come here. Jura. Here. Come. Come. Jura. Sit. Sit. Jura. As you can see, incredibly obedient. She's joined by her old friend Lucy, who is deaf as a post. And my wife's come to see me as well. And uh, there are her feet. That's as much as you're going to get to see. Jura, terrible. Come on, come and say hello. Yes, that's better. Well, almost. Ah, well. <laughs>